our composite fiber optic cable inside. Hey tech enthusiasts, welcome back to Fast Cabling. Today we're tackling a really exciting and challenging project, bringing fast, stable Wi-Fi to a rural tourist destination where signal just doesn't reach. We're talking about campgrounds, walking trail, and visitor centers, and some of them are up to three kilometers. And we know no signal or no service is bad for tourists and bad for business. So I'm going to show you how we build a long distance outdoor Wi-Fi solution using fiber optic cables traveling over several kilometers. So let's jump in. So why we are using fiber optic cable in the first place? Well, over long distances, 500 meters, 1 kilometers, even 3 kilometers, traditional copper ethernet just doesn't cut it. The signal degrades quickly, is slow, and interference is a big issue, especially in mountain terrain. And fiber optic cables, on the other hand, transmit data using lights not electrical signals, and that means no interference, much faster speeds, and data can travel up to a few kilometers, so it's perfect for our needs. But what about power? So fiber is great for data, but it doesn't carry power. So that's why this comes in, composite fiber optic cable. Now it has one or more fiber optic strings for high speed data, also copper wires for power, and even a grounding wires for safety. And it's all in one rugged outdoor rated cable, so we can bring both power and data over the same cable to our remote SS point. Super efficient. And first, let me show you how to insert the composite fiber optic cable into the termination box. So let's take out all the screws and open up the cap. Now inside our termination box, we can see the terminal blocks and the fiber optic coupler. Now I'm going to show you how to plug it in. First we can take out one of the hole plug and stuck our composite fiber optic cable inside. All right. Now let's separate the fiber optic cable and our wires. Those two are fiber optic cables. We have the positive and the negative wires. So just pick one of the terminal block, loose it up. Now we have the red one for positive, put it in. and screw it back tightly, real tight, so you can pull it out. Now for the negative, again, stuck it in, and screw it back. So they're tight enough. Now for the grounding cable, this is our grounding point. Let's wrap it around and connect and other grounding wires go to the earth, just like this. Put it on here. And With it, tight enough. Now let's connect our fiber optic cables. We have two string, string one and string two. Let's put string one here. Just connect it to the coupler. Remember this one is one. And the second one for string two.
All right. So now we are all done. Now for the positive wires, make sure you connect positive wires on this side and negative for negative. So now we are at our control room and this is where the magic happens. On our rack, we can see three power supply with the circuit breaker. We'll talk about one of them. Here's how it works. First, we connect the local AC power into our circuit breaker. From the breaker, the power goes into our DC power supply and they're all grounded. Safety first. And the output for this power supply is 48 volt DC and it goes directly to our termination box. For each power supply, it can provide two sets of power. Today, we're using this one here. Next, we have this 10G uplink fiber managed switch. From the switch, we run a fiber patch cord to our termination box linking data to the same cable that carrying power, which is our composite fiber optic cable. We can take a look inside, remember how we connected the cables to our termination box. Now we are going to turn on our power supply here. So now our composite fiber optic cable is sending both power and data toward the destination. So let's pretend we are now at one of the outdoor points. This could be a trail rest stop or a visitor center. As you can see, our composite fiber optic cables is coming into this outdoor termination box. We'll reveal what's inside the box later and we can see it connects to our PUE fiber media converter. Now this device converts fiber signal into Ethernet signal and also sends out power over Ethernet to our Wi-Fi access point. Now first, we have a fiber patch cord run from our termination box. We need to connect it to an SFP transceiver first. Then let's slide it into our fiber PoE media converter. Let's see. So now the fiber optical signal is going to transmit into Ethernet signal and also carrying both power and data since this is power over Ethernet. Now this Ethernet cable is already connected to our outdoor rated waterproof Wi-Fi SS point. But wait, why isn't it getting any power? So now let's go back to our termination box and see what happens. Let me put it back on. So inside the termination box, okay. We can see a DC circuit breaker and also a surge protector. We have to switch it on like this in order to send power to our wireless SS point. Also, the surge protector is crucial because lightning and static are real risks in outdoor setup. Now, take a look at the back of our termination box. The composite fiber optic cables goes in here, both the power wires and our fiber optic cable. The fiber optic cable connects to a fiber optic coupler here and connects it directly to the fiber patch cord. And the power wires goes in our DC circuit breaker that connects to the surge protector and goes out from here and directly to the media converter. Now, all of this is probably grounded, which is critical because without grounding, a lightning strike could destroy your equipment or even worse, start a fire. So now let's go to check if our media converter is on. Yes, all the lights and also our wireless access point are getting the power. Yes, they did. And one more key detail in this setup, voltage drop. Even though we're sending 48 volt from the control room, by the time it travels two or three kilometers, the voltage may drop to 44 or even 42 volts. But this media converter has a built-in voltage booster. It ensures the output stays at stable 48 volt power over Ethernet, which is exactly what our Wi-Fi access point needed. So smart little feature that makes a big difference.
So last but not least, let's talk a little more about this case. Our client originally wanted to build a mesh Wi-Fi network across the mountain. But here's the deal. Mesh Wi-Fi is great, but only in tight spaces. In the mountains, the knots are too far apart, and there's too much interference, so you get dropouts and delay. Instead, we recommend giving every access point the same SSID and password. So when the tourists rock from point A to point B, their phones automatically reconnect to the nearest access point. It's seamless and way more reliable. Plus it's easier to maintain and much more affordable. So that's how we brought fast, reliable Wi-Fi to the mountains using composite fiber optic cable, the fiber PoE media converter, and smart outdoor planning. Now if you're working on a similar project, rural campus or outdoor, this setup can scale easily. And feel free to drop your questions in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Now thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you in our next video.